Workers lose ground to inflation despite big wage gains in an article from the Wall Street Journal. And I think this is going to be an important topic because even though I would not say based on my understanding is that wages and inflation have a direct positive correlation. I would say based on my understanding that they do have some form of a relationship among, between each other. Right. And in this article, we say that worker pay increases fell behind inflation in 2022 for the second year in a row. And that left households worse off despite historically strong pay gains. A really tight labor market pushed up average hourly earnings by 4.6% in December from a year earlier. So that's year to year compared to a 6.5 annual inflation rate in the same period. Likewise, average hourly earnings rose by 4.9% in December 2021 for a year earlier compared with a 7% inflation rate. Here's a chart. We can see average hourly earnings from a year earlier, and then we can see it spiking around the pandemic and it started to move down and it also started to move back up. Okay. So the result is worker pay actually failed the past two years after accounting for inflation, inflation adjusted average hourly earnings or real earnings were down 1.7% in December, 2022 from a year earlier following a 2.1% decline in December, 2021. So during the past two years, supply chain disruptions related to the pandemic, higher energy costs cause inflation to outpace wage gains. The effect of these supply factors is now fading, putting less pressure on consumer prices. Both increases from pay and inflation have been cooling. But for the past two months, inflation has been easing more than wages, giving paychecks a boost. Right. But we still know that the wages are not greater than the cost than the actual inflation. And only if paychecks aren't keeping up with inflation, households will be forced to cut back on spending, which can send us into a downturn, also known as a recession. But in this specific situation, we still have to pin up savings thanks to a lot of that federal stimulus and reduced spending during the early months of the pandemic. And we talked about this before. There's still a lot of money in the economy, right? That has not been brought out yet. And I was talking about this earlier. If that people can still get access to credit, they may never have to spend that money because they don't have to pull the money out of the bank or pull it out of their savings to utilize it because I can still get access to credit lines. So families tapped into uh, those savings last year to keep up the consumption. Inflation adjusted consumer spending either rose or held level every month of last year through November, according to the latest data available, indicating that consumers have yet to pull back. And what we have not seen from the consumer is that they're going to pull back their spending because really not because of inflation, because they don't have access to cash or yet they can't get credit. And I think once we see that, then we can kind of really understand the shape of the economy. My biggest question is, is that higher wages and my, from my understanding will start to drive inflation. And I don't understand how they think they can really lower inflation and not have weight and have wages go up. And that in turn won't create more inflation because if they have to hire people at a higher price, therefore they got to pass that cost all the, on to the consumer. Then if the consumer goes to try to buy it, that's going to start creating more inflation and it's going to become a feedback mechanism. And I don't, I, so that's the part I'm not getting, but let's just see how this plays out. And as we go more into 2023, let's kind of figure out, let's look at wages in comparison to inflation and do they meet? Do they actually get kind of neck to neck or do we have it to where there's still going to be this big imbalance? David W. Williams, also known as Diamond Dave, I'll talk to you later.